And welcome back, footy fans, to another episode of Donnie's Disposals. I am your host, Coach Donnie Hess, here back with another footy insight. I told you guys I'm trying to find more state league players to sit down and have a chat with. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a very, very special guest. Somebody coming off a heck of an accomplishment this last season in the Sample W. We have midfielder extraordinaire from the Central District's Bulldogs, Miss Georgia Madigan. Georgia, thank you for joining me today. No worries, Donnie. Thanks for inviting me. All right. All right. Let's get right into it. I know this is a footy podcast, but before we dive into the footy, let's talk about you as a person just a little bit. So kind of let me know just a little bit about your life outside of the game of football. Yeah. So for a job, I'm a teacher, so a high school teacher, and I'm loving that. So I teach years eight through to 12, um, PE, business and English. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Fantastic. You you are definitely a busy woman when it comes to it. That is not a bad thing at all. So let's jump into it. You are in footy mad South Australia. So I asked this earliest footballing memory. Earliest memory would personally would be doing Oz kick. So Oz kick in Australia is like the juniors kind of you do your fundamentals and whatnot. Um, but as a supporter, it'd be going to a Pies game with my brother and our parents put those little stick on tattoos all over us and stuff. And that was heaps of fun. Which I actually is a great transition because I was going to ask, what is the club that you support and you drop it early? You're a pies supporter. How is an SA girl, a pies supporter? I must ask. Dad sort of told us we can go for whoever we want growing up as long as it's Collingwood. So I can't say I got a lot of choice (laughs) in that regard, but it was a lot of fun. All right, I got to ask, did any did, did you have any family members that were not Pies fans, and how's the banter if they are? Um, no immediate family members. Like I said, Dad didn't give us much of a choice, <laughs> but we have a few interstate relatives who actually live in Melbourne but go for Adelaide Crows and Port Adelaide, so that's always a bit of fun razzing them up about it. Definitely. That would definitely be for sure on that one. So you've got a lot of a lot of great players that have donned the pies jumper. So I have to ask this. I know this isn't easy. This is like choosing your favorite child, favorite player of the past that has donned the pie on the pies jersey. And who's your favorite player currently on the pies list? Past player, I'd have to say Alan Didak, just the stuff he pulls out and his skill, um, especially in front of goals, was awesome. And current player would have to be Braden Maynard, so Brozzy. I think we play fairly similarly, and I like his aggressive style, I guess. Competitive beast. And toughness personified on that one, for sure. So, all right, let's 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 go into your journey a little bit. So I, I got to ask this. How is it that you ended up at Central Districts playing footy? Um, so like I mentioned, I did a bit of Oz kick early on. I grew up in a small country town about six hours from Adelaide um, and there wasn't a girls league. So when I was seven, I had to choose whether I wanted to play netball or play in the boys league and all my friends were playing netball. So I kind of followed that. Um, so I didn't find footy again. I played basketball for 14 years, found footy again at 18, um, was playing like a little dinosaur competition, which was how we started off in our Barossa League and got picked up to play for Centrals in their inaugural year, which was really cool. Fantastic. It was great to see those cross coders get in it. But the best part is, is that you had that little bit of footy as, as growing up. That is absolutely awesome. So I know you're still early in your footy career, but I must ask this. This is always fun. What is your biggest accomplishment so far as a footballer? Uh, it would definitely be the Premiership the year just gone so as a team that was really awesome and to be able to celebrate with that that with the girls was cool that's fantastic i love that it's a team one i always get i must say this georgia for for the for the ladies that i have interviewed so many of them give a team answer for this and i genuinely appreciate that i think that is so awesome that your biggest accomplishment is a team accomplishment that is awesome so i I'm, let's go into the rooms just a little bit you have a best mate at the club um, I think part of our premiership this year was that we were so connected as a team, both on and off the field. So we all got really close. But I'd say probably Maddie Lane, Demi Sonneman, um, Yovi would be all girls that I consider close friends. 
Awesome. Awesome. So let, let's, let's stay in the rooms just a little bit longer. Kind of describe to me the room this year for central districts. Was it, was it fun and outgoing? Was it very business-like? Like describe to me the room uh, uh, of the girls this year. Yeah. So like I kind of said before, we were very connected. So we would always have something fun we're doing before training, whether it's playing cricket with the foam rollers or we have Charlotte Riggs, a young girl who has a joke of the day all the time. So there was definitely that playful element. But once we got out on the field, we knew we were there for business and got to it. Fantastic. That's great that you can have a fun atmosphere, but then when it's time to play footy, you guys are ready to go. That is fantastic. So as you said, you're a teacher. So I'm very interested to find this out because again, unfortunately, you're not full-time professional when it comes to it. So you have to, to supplement the income. So kind of describe to me a typical training day for you. How, how long a day do you have? And, and does it get rather tiring when it comes to it about halfway through the season? Um, yeah, definitely. So I try and get myself into good habits. So I go to the gym before school as well. So that's usually around a 5 a.m. wake up um, and then have the school day. And on Tuesdays, we have staff meeting as well. So I'm not leaving school until five or so um, and then heading straight to training. So they are big days generally. Um, but yeah, footy gives me that opportunity to, I guess, unwind as well a little bit, which is nice. Yeah, it gives you that gives you that other thing to go with. And then kind of what is your typical game day routine? Like how, how do you get ready for a game, say a home game? What's your typical game day routine? Um, so I have a thing I kind of always have to be the first one there so that I'm not walking into everyone in the change rooms already and I get to talk to the girls as they come in. So I get up relatively early before game day, have a little bit to eat, have a coffee and then get going. Early. I've tried to chuck the superstitions to the side because I didn't want to be too reliant on those. Um, mm -hmm. So just getting there early is the main one for me. Awesome. Awesome. So I, I love seeing this because everybody kind of plays their, their position differently and, and people take cues. So was there a player from the past that you watched, maybe a pie supporter or maybe a previous teammate that you modeled your game after as a kid? Um, I'd say recently would be around Braden Maynard. Um, like I was talking about before, because I play backline. So he's one that I like, the competitiveness nature of him, relentless, doesn't get beaten and that sort of thing, always sticking up for his teammates, which I'd say I highlight my game on. Awesome. Awesome. We'll, we'll go, we'll go to this point. I mean, you, you've had some superstar talent going through the sample, sample W over the last few years. So I got to ask this toughest opponent that you have ever played against. Um. A lot of the girls, they're really strong and the league's just developing every single year, um, whether it's skills, intensity and whatnot. But this year just gone, it would be Piper Window, who got our best and fairest for the league, um, only 18 years old, but incredibly strong, especially through her marking and the way she uses the footy is just great. Yeah, I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed of what I saw her of her this year. So I know that there's there's some AFLW fans that whoever whoever Piper ends up at are going to be very, very happy campers with wherever she ends up, which I'm having a feeling she might be donning a Crows jersey, which is scary to think that that little superstar gets to go to the Crows who are already very, very good. So we've kind of mentioned it a couple of times your team, Central Districts Bulldogs, won the premiership this year. Your thoughts on this accomplishment, because this was the first time Centrals had ever made finals, and you go and win the whole thing. Thoughts on this season? Oh, that's, a, yeah. So we did a lot of work in the preseason around our values as a leadership group um, and spread them to the whole team, and that buy-in was massive. So the girls bought into it straight away, and I think, that underpinned a lot of our success. Um, but the actual grand final itself, we only led for 13 seconds. So mm -hmm. we didn't get time to comprehend that we were ahead in the game and then the sirens going and everyone's around you. So that was absolute mayhem. But, yeah, a lot of it did come down to our values work and being so connected as a team. All right. So, And I got to say this, for the people that are watching the YouTube video, I'll ask this, Georgia, I – Asked you politely if there was any way we could see your premiership medal. And then I saw recently that you guys got commemorative rings. So if you could, for our YouTube watchers, could you show us those, the premiership medal and the ring? Because this is so fantastic that you have these forever momentum from mementos of this premiership. 
Yeah, of course. Um, so this is the medal. Try and get it in the screen. So got the sample logo and then Premier's 2023. Fantastic. It's really cool. And then, yeah, like you said, we got given the rings the other night. So that's an initiative the sample does for the women's. Um, so it's got, try and get it in the screen, the Bulldogs emblem on it, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, sample one in gold. And then we've got Premier's 2023. Something so, yeah, pretty cool little keepsakes. Awesome. Something to cherish forever. Absolutely. So, so let's let's go off this. I got to ask this question because, again, premierships, there's always some crazy things. Do you have any crazy off-field stories of some of the girls celebrating their premiership? That's a pretty tricky question because we were fortunate that – um we had probably a month, two months of celebrations in terms of whether it was um, our BNF, the club gala, footy trips, that kind of thing, um, and just general celebration. So it kind of all melds together. Mm -hmm. I couldn't off the top of my head tell you a decent story because um, it's all kind of <laughs> messed together. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Not not a problem. I can understand you were just enjoying the premiership for sure. In fact, I'm I'm gonna do a kind of a question, a question without notice here. I was watching this game live and I watched the coverage as Shelby Smith was being interviewed by Channel 7. And you guys decided to absolutely the whole team decided to photo bomber. Whose idea was it? And how long did it take you guys to just go, bugger it, we're gonna do it? Oh, that was kind of a split <laughs> second thing. We saw her there being interviewed and Shelby, she's worked a lot on her interview skills over the years, but we know we can razz her up a bit with it still. Um, so we just saw her and said, let's go over to Shelby, get around her sort of thing. Um, got actually told to stay back by security before we were let through. But yeah, that was just getting around our captain. I remember absolutely cracking up as I was watching as as I was watching that. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And the, the U Dogs chance going, that was absolutely magnificent. So I had to say it, it definitely gave a chuckle to me for watching that for sure. So we, we'll go to it. Premiership all aside, I, I'll ask you this again. We're, we're, we're getting closer to the preseason and, and getting ready for your defense of your premiership. So what do you think is going to be your biggest challenge this year defending your premiership crown? Um, the biggest challenge is obviously the other teams. So as much as we are hungry to go back to back, they are hungry for a premiership as well. So everyone's going to be training hard, be trying to strive for the exact same thing. So that will be our biggest challenge um, going another step up because we can't just stay the way we've been going. Like I said before, the league's increasing in intensity, skill, talent every single year, and we've got to rise to that as well. Yep, one hundred percent. Cannot wait. I know it's. I know it's only just short of November here, but I can't. I can't wait for the season to start already. I have my sample W app. I cannot wait to watch that for sure. So I, I will be watching with bated breath as this season goes along. So so let's let's go to you a little bit. Do you have any personal goals to that you want to accomplish next season? Um, a lot of it. We talk about being the best player we can be. For the team so that's my real goal um moving forward so in getting into the gym a bit doing all my running and whatnot and also it'd be good to improve in the leadership um sense so part of the leadership team and just continuing to develop within that would be great awesome that's fantastic great great to hear on that one so I, I one of the things that i love about women's footy is is i feel that you have a connection with with fans a little bit differently and almost better in some situations. So I love finding this out. Do you have a, a best fan interaction that you've ever had, say a youngster getting an autograph or maybe even somebody on the outer deciding to say something that made you chuckle a little bit. So best fan interaction you've ever had on, on, on the ground. Yeah, we, um, we're pretty fortunate. Our youth development squads, a lot of us girls go back and help or coach within that. So seeing those young players come out to then support our games is really awesome. But my best fan interaction would probably be really early on, I think my second year of samples. I didn't think much of myself. And I had a man come up to me and tell me that I was his wife's favourite player, which was really cool because I didn't think much of myself at that point. So to be someone's favourite player was awesome. Oh, that is fan that is fantastic. So I I that is that is absolutely great. I love that somebody took the time to do that. I I 
that's magnificent. Well, that's a great, absolute funny story. So I'm gonna have a little bit, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun as we get towards the end of, of this interview and, and ask some intriguing questions. So for here, I'm going to, I'm going to take you out of the, uh, out of the player mode. And I'm going to put you as the list manager for a little bit of fun. All of the other clubs in the sample W are open. You can grab one player from the sample, from any of the other sample W teams to join centrals to maybe help you win a premiership next year. Who would that one player be and why? Well, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know. Our main thing we'd need is height, but the only player coming to mind would be, like, you want the BNF from last year. That'd be great to have her on board. So Piper window would be great. Um, but otherwise, someone with a bit of height as well would be great. Maybe a Lauren Young or something like that. Not a bad one. You add you add her with Rosenwig up front. That'd be a scary forward line for sure. And then thinking about Piper Window with Shelby Smith in the midfield, that would be terrifying for for some, especially if potentially Caitlin Wedland can come back from Brisbane and continue to play Sandville next year. Would be magnificent. That'd be a scary thought process for for most there. So all right. We're going to have a little bit of fun here. We may show, throw some teammates under the bus, but we're going to have a little bit of fun. So I want you to think of the first teammate that comes to mind when I say this, when I say some of these phrases or names. So who at the Central District's board is the team mom? Oh, team mom. That's actually a tricky one. Maybe Demi. She's always giving me my energy like, gels and whatnot before the game and bringing me little bits and bobs i'll go demi all right who's the funniest who's got the best jokes or plays the best practical jokes maddie lane thinks she's the funniest but it'd have to be charlotte riggs with her jokes and whatnot fantastic all right who's the toughest who's the one you want helping you get in a fight in a back alley shelby smith (laughs) Every day. <laughs> I'm not surprised on that one for sure. I'm not surprised on that one at all. All right. Who's the social butterfly? Who's the one everybody talks to? That would be Maddie Lane, but it's more so Maddie talking to them because she just she loves the chat. <laughs> She's a chatterbox for sure. I love yeah. it. All right. Who's got the worst white line fever? Who's the one that steps on the pitch and you go, whoa, calm down? Um, <laughs> Probably Shannon Murphy. <laughs> As soon as she's got that competitive nature with her, whether it's footy or anything else competitive, she's go. Fantastic. All right. Who's the most emotional? Who's the one that easily gets the tears flowing? Um, I don't know at the moment, actually. <laughs> There's a few that are a bit emotional, but I can't actually think off the top of my head. It's always it's always when you get put on the spot that you forget your teammates' names. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the first one, not the first one to say that at all. All right, an interesting one. Who's the quirkiest? Who's who's the most unique unit at the Bulldogs? Um, that would probably be Jess Schultz. So, she when you think you know everything about her, you learn something new. So the other day she whipped out a unicycle from the back of her car. So she had a unicycle in her car <laughs> and a couple of other things like that. But just she pulls out these random things. But, yeah, she's great. Chases birds away from us and whatnot at training when they're scary. Yep. Make sure make sure she's there. That's awesome. All right. Who's the one that takes the longest to get ready? Um, That would probably be oh, George Avery is always the one who's late. So probably her. Yeah, right. she's the one that's late. So I'm going to say she takes the longest. Oh, this will be controversial. Who's the biggest diva? Diva. <laughs> mm. Well, Shannon Murphy always has to have her little bits of her hair slicked down before a photo. So if we're talking about that kind of sense, then I'd say her. <laughs> I love it. All right. Who's the best cook? Who's the one you want cooking the team meals? None of them. I don't know if any of them can cook, to be honest. Oh, no team meals. Come on. All right. <laughs> we are pretty lucky. We get supplied by the club like once a month past tonight. So interesting. So you have, yeah. you have to figure, you have to figure it out. I have to, you have to have I people bring you cooking or something. Cooking skills, yeah. All right. Last but not least, I love this one. Fashionably late. Who's the one just making it on time to team meetings? Um, Well, George, we've already established as late. So I'd have to say probably Elaine Grigg. 
she rolls into our um, little huddle at the start of the game just on time. <laughs> at least she's on time and not late for sure. Absolutely. Great. So one of my favorite one of my favorite things that I love, especially be- being somebody that got into footy, is the footy nickname. I love the footy nickname. They are hilarious at times. Who's got the best nickname at the club and what is it? Um, we have Carissa and we call her Rissol. So I don't mind that one, but our best one's probably a really recent one, our coach, Ben Hunt. So he goes by Rexy, because Rexy Hunt. Um, and he made a comment about having short arms the other day. So he is now T-Rexy. So <laughs> I that's love our, it. We're trying to really make that one stick. Oh boy, man, that'll be that'll be fun to see that one go there. So, all right. So, I, I wanted to throw this one in because, again, I'm trying I'm trying to learn the grounds of the Sandfield W. So, I, I want you to do this. I want you to take away your home ground. I know it's not easy. Take away your home ground. What's the best deck to play on the Sandfield W besides your home ground? Um, I guess Prospect at the moment is one that comes to mind because we won a flag there, so you can't hate that ground at all. <laughs> Not so, that's North, so that's North Adelaide's ground. Um, so, yeah, a lot of competitive competitiveness with them there as well. Mm-hmm, for sure. All right. I, I'm, I, I've I'm told many people throughout the podcast that have listened to this, I have never been to Australia. It is on my bucket list. And I'm probably going to spend like a month there because I've got so many friends that have said, come on, coach, come on over and I'll let you, you can come see the footy. So I'm doing a little bit of research to be sure that when I go, I'm prepared perfectly. So when I go, when you go to the footy as a patron, what is your go-to food at the footy? Oh, you can't go past chips and gravy. Chips and gravy is yum. Always got to mm-hmm. get them. Um, Adelaide Oval spiced it up a bit recently and they've got like burgers and sunter and wraps and whatnot. So, and even curry. So it depends what you're in the mood for, but a chips and gravy is always a go. Yep, the hot chips, the hot chips have been surprisingly really up there. I know that the, the, the footy pie and the meat pie is, was definitely those two tend to are right neck and neck as, as with all the people that I've had the chance to talk with. So, all right. As a supporter, when you go to say the Adelaide Oval, where's the most ideal place to sit to watch the footy for you? Um, for me, it'd be in the first few rows on the wing because you're just able to take in the atmosphere. You can see most of the play, um, which is really good. Whereas if you're at a goal end, it's fantastic when the ball's down there. But when it's at the other end, you can't see much. Um, mm. So yeah, I'd say on a wing's ideal. Fantastic. All right. And then my last question, and I'm, I'm starting a list so I can try to watch as many of these games as I possibly can. And I know this isn't easy for some favorite game of footy you have ever seen with a live at the ground on the telly. Doesn't matter. Favorite game of footy you have ever seen. Um, I went to the Collingwood grand final this year. So that was really cool. So Collingwood versus Brisbane. So I can't put it past that. Hard to argue that that is not one of the best grand finals up there with the 2018 grand final Collingwood v West Coast. I know that didn't turn out the way you wanted for for Collingwood, but I definitely enjoyed that grand grand final for sure. So, Georgia, this has been fantastic. I, I loved being able to have a chance to sit down and have a chat with you. Please do me a favor when you talk with Shelby Smith the next time. Give her a little bit of stick because I've been wanting to have her on the podcast because she's absolutely magnificent. I, I love her game. So next time you talk to Shelby, give her a little bit of stick because I'd love to have her on. We just can't seem to get the right connection when it comes to our messages. So if you could do that for me, that would yeah, be absolutely. Yeah, she's a busy girl. She's a busy girl, but I'll try for I know, you. <laughs> I know. I, and I understand that. And I've, I've, I've talked with Phil Aspinall, who's a huge Dougie supporter, and he says, She's super busy. And I go, I know, but I just had to, had to give her a little bit of stick for, for of sure on that one. So that is going to do it for our chat here again, Georgia. Thank you so much for hopping on the podcast today. No worries. Thanks for having me, Donnie. Fantastic. Fantastic. That is going to do it for another episode of Donnie's Disposal. Again, keep track more AFLW coverage again, off season supporter series still to come and a few more player chats that I have lined up my sleeve that are going to come out very, very soon to keep an eye out on the channel. And we will be back again with another episode of Donnie's Disposals very, very soon.